That's one thing about Oregon. Maybe it's the smoke from all the fires, I don't know. But they have some really awesome sunsets. Okay, this is Chick a Homney, Chickahominy Reservoir. It is in southern Oregon, kind of eastern central Oregon. There is a lake down there, but I don't have a fishing license for Oregon. It's part of the reason I'm going home early. So, I can't fish, which is kind of a bummer. But it's a nice place, all things considered. It's kind of a volcanic area, and that's always kind of neat. I don't see too much smoke, which is nice considering the whole state is on fire. We've had yet another problem with the motorhome. Even if they do call this total and I have to buy another one, I've decided I'm keeping it. I'll put a non-op on it, put it in storage. It seems like every time I turn, the first two, three years I had this, no problems at all. This last trip seems like every time I turn the key, I've got a new problem. Let me show you guys what happened. So I'm going down the road the other night and I hear this loud bang. And I see sparks flying out from under my RV. This was dragging. I just realized it's kind of beat there. I didn't notice that until just now. So what happened, I have to lay on the ground and it's really hot. But it broke right there where the header comes down. And that's what was supporting this. So the whole thing just kind of flopped and I had to get under there with plumber's tape, connect it back together. I might use a piece of flex tubing and cut it and put clamps over it and bridge the, uh, the exhaust leak, you know, bridge the two pieces together with that. Or I might have it welded when I get back home. Um, I know a good welder, so <laughs> that helps. Uh, actually, I know a couple good welders now that I think about it. One of my friends has been welding the last few years. But I know somebody else who's been welding for many years that I'll probably take it to. So this is what I did for my temporary fix. First, I had the plumber's tape with me, so I hung it up there with the plumber's tape. Still need to get some exhaust tape to go around there and keep more of the air in. But we've got the pipes, you know, basically back to each other with all this wire. I've got it double wired and triple wired. And this wire is connected to that wire, connected to this wire. So if any of them should break, the next one in line will keep it from flopping out on the road and going in my tire or somebody else's. At least that's the plan. Next auto parts store, we'll put some tape through there over that area to keep more of the exhaust flowing through. But when I turned it on earlier, I was surprised quite a bit of air did come out all the way back there at the pipe. So most of it is still flowing through the muffler, even with that kind of damage. So me and Sierra decided we were gonna come out. I took off my glasses hoping I could see the screen better. Nope, <laughs> it didn't help. Uh, we decided to come out and have a look around. We're in one of these funny wind-shaped awnings. This place gets a ton of high winds. And of course, she's always on. She very rarely gets tired. She's gonna pull my arm off if she jumps off the end like she's trying to do. Come back this way, come on. Um, Sierra, look at the camera. Look at, there's a kitty in the camera. There's a bird? No, not up there. In the camera. I like, fuck that. I don't want to look at your camera. <laughs> Poor Sierra. Um, she saw grasshoppers or something on the way over here, so she's been staring into the sky ever since, hoping it comes back. It might have been a dragonfly, a small dragonfly. I don't know what it was. It had kind of a strange flight pattern. And it was a, a little bigger than it was bigger than a fly. She has better eyes than I gave her credit for. 
She kept looking up, and I'm thinking, there's nothing up there. Nothing up there at all. And then I looked a little closer, and I see what she's freaking out over. Where did it go? This one dang fly crawling around somewhere over here on this log. There it is. And she saw that all the way up there and decided she has to get it. You know, there's enough flies back at the house. You don't need to um, be going after the outside flies. I knew when I came down this road, I needed to be going slower than the speed limit. I hope this person's all right. And if they'd have gone a little more, they would have went right over the cliff. That would have been really bad. I don't like leaving my RV alone for this long, but... I'm not going to get too close. I don't want to put the person on the video, but I do want to see what's going on. There we go. Am I recording? Yeah. I don't know if you can see this strip right here. But this is where the person went off the road. And when they got into this loose gravel on the shoulder, sign says no shoulder, that's why I was going so slow. And when they got into this loose gravel, they lost traction, took out a couple of the rails over there by where those people are standing. Looks like they're going to start doing controlled traffic, so I better get back and get ready to go. Even though if I'm recording, am I recording? Yeah. Now the reason we're waiting here right now this is the same accident, but they're going to have to life flight the victim out of here. I don't know if you can see down there, but there's a helicopter. The nearest hospital is quite a ways off. So they're going to load the patient onto this helicopter and then take off and let us all go again. At least I think that's what's happening. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh. There's nothing funny about it. I'm just laughing to make myself feel a little bit better about sitting here for so long. I don't really want to be bitchy to the people that are saving people's lives. But come on. Fuck, the ambulance could have drove him there quicker than you're fucking loading the guy in. You guys don't realize this because I had paused the video, but we've been sitting here like another 20, 30 minutes. Hope he didn't like die right there or something, but even then, you'd think they'd get him out of the road. I, I just don't understand. I hope they get the guy to the hospital soon. That's kind of the point of having a life flight. They could have had the ambulance haul him to a hospital quicker than this helicopter pilot is loading him and taking off. I, I don't get it. Well, now I'm really pissed off. Not at the person, of course, he can't help himself being in an accident. Maybe a little bit at the helicopter pilot for taking so damn long. I had put this phone on pause. You probably already noticed the screen's kind of blurry. I had put this phone on pause like I've done many times in the past. We sat here for I don't know how long while the driver Let's switch to the wide angle. It's pretty blurry too. Anyways, um, I put the phone on pause, didn't realize the flash was on, and the lens that covers the cameras shattered. I had heard that that could happen. I never thought it would happen to me. I've had this phone almost a year. You guys hear me talk about it all the time. I love this phone, or I used to. Now I freaking hate it. What a piece of crap. You notice I'm not cussing? Usually I cuss, but this video is not going to get demonetized or out of the algorithms. I want as many people as possible to see this and know how LG failed me. Now, when I get to my next stop, I'm going to call LG and, and also probably 
contact them through email and social media, but this is some bull. I can't believe this just happened. I haven't even paid this phone off yet. I have insurance, but I'm not gonna pay the insurance fee. I will cancel my service with my company and switch to another company um, rather than pay for something that's not my fault. If their camera cannot handle the heat from the flash, then they needed to relocate the flash or put something into the app to make it shut the flash off after so many minutes. This is, this is crazy. I, I'll somehow try to merge all this into one and show you what happened. So, the LG V20, you guys have heard me brag about this phone a lot, it's let me down now, and the LG G6, both have the same issue. The flash is under the same lens as the cameras, a piece of glass that covers all of them. Um, LG will not admit that this is a problem with their phone, although they've done exactly that with the release of the V30. They've now moved the flash away from the cameras and the camera lenses, which tells me that they know it was an issue. Um, they don't want to acknowledge it though, because then they'll have to cover it under warranty, and this has happened to a lot of their phones. The LG V30, the newest one, again, the camera and the flash are separated, so it shouldn't be an issue with the 30, but with the 20 and with the G6, it's a huge issue. There are two attorneys um, that are already looking for information, planning to file a class action lawsuit against this, against LG over this, and of course I've sent them my story and my information. I believe what's happening is this flash is extremely hot. I've tried downloading a heart rate monitoring app on my phone. I do that with every phone I have. But on this phone, and you place your finger over the lens and the flash and it lights up your finger and it reads your heart rate but on this phone I can't hold my finger to it long enough to read my heart rate which is why I finally went out and bought one of these dedicated heart rate you know pulse oximeter um, thingies that go on your finger I had to do that because I couldn't I couldn't test it with my phone like I did with every other phone I've ever had the reason I couldn't is because it was so damn hot that within just a couple seconds of holding my finger over the flash and the camera my finger was burning quicker than faster than the phone could read my heart rate which doesn't take very long at all so I think what's going on is I think this lens that covers the camera is sealed and because the flash gets so hot if there's any moisture that gets inside there when the flash turns on and it gets really hot you can it causes the steam to expand and literally explode or at least crack the lens until it releases. In my case, as you saw from the photos, I'll add them again after this section, um, it literally exploded over one of the lenses, over one of the cameras. And it looks like somebody shot it with a pellet gun, except if you know anything about, you know, exit wounds, particularly with glass, the crater is always on the exit side. And you can tell from these photos, they're not very clear because I took them with this phone using a mirror, but you can tell from these photos, the crater is on the outside, which means whatever broke the glass came from inside that sealed lens camera assembly, which tells me without a doubt, it's LG's fault. And I'm not done. I'm, I've, I've, I'm, I'm in discussions with LG and AT&T as we speak, and I'm hoping they're going to do something to resolve this, but... I'm not counting on it, and I told them I was going to, you know, talk about it on my YouTube. I lied. I told them I had like 300,000 subscribers just to get their attention, but it, it really doesn't matter how many subscribers I have. If two people see this and don't buy their phones, you know, I'll feel like I, I, I did the world a service by saving two people, you know, each a thousand dollars, or I, like I said, I think the V30 isn't going to have this issue. So if you're really interested in the LG line, you might want to look at the V30. But the 20 and the 6, don't do it. Don't waste your money. 
Everything else about this phone I love, but that one flaw, that one flaw alone is enough to really sour me on this company and and everything they make. I still love my LG TV. You know, I, I haven't had any complaints about that yet, but and I love the way that the two can work together. I can cast anything from my phone to the TV very easily because they're both LG through the screen share LG app. Um, there are other ways to send your stuff to a smart TV, but when they're both from the same brand, it just makes it a lot easier.